Hello and welcome. I am going over some coding problems on HackerRank and this is to prep for a technical interview. So if you're going through that, then this is the place for you, I think. And today I'm going over a problem organizing containers of balls. So I have a 15 minute timer on myself. Booyah, let's do this. David has several containers, each with a number of balls in it. He has just enough containers to sort each type of ball he has into its own container. David wants to sort the balls using uh, his sort method. As an example, David has n equals two containers and two different types of balls. So both of which are numbered from zero to n minus one. The distribution of ball types per container are described by an n by n matrix of integers, my goodness, where the matrix has first the container and then the type as the subset. In a single operation, David can swap two balls located in different containers. Uh, and so we have actually a diagram here. So if we swap the one and the zero, we can get to this situation. Okay. Dave wants to perform some number of swap operations such that each container contains only balls of the same type. For each possible query, print possible. <laughs> in a new line, okay, otherwise print impossible. So for example, in this first diagram, Q equals two, you have uh, a matrix of one, 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 and you swap to get a, a possible uh, pure container, basically, each one, each container is pure. But here you can't do it because the numbers don't work out. So no matter how many times we swap balls of type one, we cannot, end up in a situation yeah because there's always some impurity there okay <laughs> number association my goodness okay okay so the, the containers are the rows and the types are the columns so in container zero there are four reds and one green and when you do the swap you are swapping container one here so there's definitely going to be a kind of like uh, understanding of what what's going on with the math uh, in order to solve this because it's going to be too much to like do um, minute operations. So one thing I'm noting is that the numbers in each column need to be the same because you can't make an exchange otherwise. So they need to be the same, I think, because you can imagine having a, a bunch of bins that are already like, uh, filled in. Like, let's say for example, this one had 51 balls. And this one had one only one zero ball. It would still be fine because that's already kind of sorted, right? Okay, so after checking out the dis the discussion a little bit, I uh, get a definitely a better understanding of like what I was already kind of thinking of. And it's the idea that once a container ha like a container will start out with a number of balls, you can't really change that number because you are exchanging one for one always. So you need to kind of like set that in stone because well it is it is effectively set in stone. So keeping track of that is a separate issue all by itself. So keeping track of um, the number of, so let's see, uh, tr uh, uh, keep number of balls per container. So each, each uh, container has its own number of balls. And we also need to keep the number of types of balls. And that's kind of speaking to what I mentioned earlier, where if you have just like 50 of one and only one of the other, then you might actually be in a, a fine situation. And that's the trick. You can keep exchanging one for one in such a way that as long as one container can fit all the balls for one of those types. So in this situation, there are three so both of these ha containers have a space of two. So that already is like a restriction. So you can only fit two in one and two in the other, period. But you have a container, you have uh, the type of ball here is uh, three for this uh, red ball or the one ball, which means that it needs to fit all three into one container. But that, right there, that's a violation because there is no container that can even fit three in the first place. And it needs to fit it exactly as well. It, once you know all the, number of balls per container, as well as the number of type of each ball, you can match them up one for one. And you can just do that with a simple sorting. So let's code that up. Uh, let's keep a an array of balls, const containers, container counts, I guess, equals an array. 
and then also const this is uh, ball types and that's another empty array okay so here I just literally need to go for a container Uh, container of containers because it is plural okay so I need to like get the sum of those so I, I'll just get the um, uh, ball count and I'm just gonna do a container I'm gonna do a reduce uh, previous current return P plus C and that will give me the sum of that and the ball count is what I add to container counts. And it's going to be in order, uh, but not that it really matters. Uh, okay, cool. And so then I go into the inner loop. And here is where I need to be a little bit more precise here. So I'm going to make a new array of containers dot length. Not that I really need to do it that way. Well, I guess I could do it for both, technically. Hmm. So let me do this. I'm going to do a little uh, let i equals zero. I. Oop. Uh, I'm like I'm like refactoring while I'm doing this stuff. Uh, sure. All right, and so anytime I see that, let's use n. So equals zero. I is less than n. I plus plus. Right. Okay. There you go. And then container equals containers. I. Oh. All right. And then I can loop through another thing, which is the actual types within the container. J equals zero, as J is less than N again, because they are the same. And now I can actually in iterate on the ball types of J. And I just add whatever the container J is. Okay, just to see what the heck all this looks like at the very end, let's do a little console log action. Container counts and ball types. All right, run some code. Okay. All right, so I got some uh, ball types equals NA. Um, interesting. So I'm actually doing this a little repetitively here, to be honest. Yeah, I don't need to do that. Then loop through each ball type within the container. Um, and so for container counts, I can actually just access the ith of that and then plus the amount by itself. So this is going to be count ball count. Ball count. Okay. And then the ball types will go by the same amount. Oh. It's saying NA because I'm adding on to nothing, so I need to fill with zero. And that, that was one of the issues there. Yeah. Fill zero. So um, these new arrays are of n length, but they are all filled with zero, so that's allowing me to do plus one onto it or plus whatever the amount is. Okay, cool. So ball counts. Uh, let's see. So this first situation, now it's two, two. So it worked out and the other one doesn't. Yep, 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 yep. So five, so I'm, I can already see, you can already, you can already kind of see the logic here. This situation is impossible because the ball containers cannot fit this ball, the, the ball types. So I just need to sort them in a way that makes sense and then do a comparison. And then that's basically it. So ball counts, ball counts dot sort and ball types dot sort. 
And I just think I could, so I could just like loop through these and then once they don't match, I can return impossible. And if I get through it, I can return possible. Return um, possible. So at the very end, I will do that. So I will loop through them for const. Doesn't really matter. No, I guess it does. Yeah, no, no, it does. Uh, let i equal zero. I need to loop through both of them. Um, and I could just literally say if container counts i doesn't equal ball types i, then I will return impossible. Yeah, I think that would do it. Uh, okay, let's run it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see what happens here. I uh, did not do. Okay, uh, lowercase capital. Okay. Ah, okay. Spelling. And I'm returning it, I'm not printing it, so maybe that's another problem. Okay, I can return it, I thought so. Um, okay, cool, so it works there, let me submit some code. Okay. All right, um, that was uh, that was actually very good, and having that understanding, and it was already something I was kind of like touching on, but honestly, it, it's a kind of pattern that I still need to work on. And like math in general is like not my strong suit. Um, but here's my solution. And I think it definitely makes intuitive sense. Let's think about the, uh, the time complexity. Uh, so going through this is definitely big O of N squared. Um, so you loop through that, fine. You do a sort, which is big O of N log and technically it's like two times that because I'm doing it twice. I loop through it all and this is big O of log n. So the biggest time complexity is definitely this part but I don't think you can get around not looking at every element so uh, I don't think this is avoidable at least with, with this implementation. Could I, be, could I make it more efficient? I still think you will always have to look through each element. So it's always gonna be n, big O of n squared is gonna be as tight as it can be, in, in my opinion. Um, so I think this is as, as efficient as I can make it. Uh, if you have any other uh, input on like how to make this even better, I would love to hear it. Uh, so definitely leave that in the comments. Uh, this was helpful, please do uh, leave a like so I know that what I'm doing is actually worth doing. Uh, and if subscribe if you find my content worthwhile. I uh, hope this was useful. I will see you next time. Bye.